Dude, it's been forever. It has. So glad to have you back on the podcast. And we're talking about something super, super cool today. Yes, I'm so excited. Can I? Do you want me to announce it or do you want to announce it? I'll let you do. Go, jump right in. What the heck's going on with this Ewok stuff? What? what? <laughs> like the best yeah. thing ever that I could hear of? Welcome. 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 Welcome to Uplink. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me back on. I'm uh, I'm super excited to talk about our upcoming fan film. Yeah, so we're working on a fan film called Ewok Hunt, a Star Wars horror story. Uh, some good friends of mine at my university, uh, I go to USC, uh, film school where George Lucas, where Ryan Johnson, uh, the composer for the Mandalorian's theme song went. Uh, so a lot of you know great creative minds, and I'm working with a lot of recent film graduates on this fan film that we're shooting in Yosemite National Park. Basically taking the Battlefront 2 game mode, Ewok Hunt, and bringing it to live action. So um, we don't get a lot of horror films, right? Not, not no, generally. No, especially in, in Star, Star Wars. Wars. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when Ewok Hunt first came out, it was like mind blowing like i had never thought about like a star wars horror movie i mean you kind of think about it when you're talking about like rogue one and that darth vader ho- corridor scene you're like okay i can start <laughs> to see how like this like that was so intense and then you get ewok hunt and you're like scared for your life from tiny what was, bears <laughs> what was your first reaction when you first played ewok hunt when you first launched into the game mode on halloween utter joy and terror constantly fighting it out inside of me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I would say I probably had the same reaction. I was surprised that they even, you know, put it that into the game because I was like, wait, Star Wars can be scary? That's very unusual, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, a lot of the people, the directors, script writers, um, and the team that, are, that is working on this project, a lot of them are huge horror films. So every night, uh, Billy, who's one of the directors and, and co writers, he, he's been watching a lot of, like, you know, Famous horror, Blair Witch Project, Halloween, Saw, you know, all the all this, you know, typical, you name it, horror. Uh, I suck when it comes to horror films, so <laughs> I, 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 I will, like, watch a little bit, and I'll, you know, you know when you watch a film through your fingertips and your fingers because yeah. you're scared of what you're about to see? That's me. That's definitely me. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we're very excited to, to, be, to be working on this project, and, and this week we're in our final uh, week of fundraising for our Scene Spark page. Uh, so we've been doing a couple fundraising streams, um, yesterday we did a we did a lot of uh, promotion for it, and I think we raised we were at forty five percent yesterday of our goal, and now we're at like fifty two fifty three percent. So we nice. raised around I think close to forty five hundred out of our eight thousand dollar goal. We have to hit eighty percent to to get to cash out on that, but um, I'm sure we'll get there. We've uh, we've got a lot of support from the community, and it, it's been absolutely amazing. Heck yeah! And I'll put a link to that in the description of this episode if you want to see this thing get to fruition and you have the money to spare it definitely do that i mean who who wouldn't want to see this come to fruition first off thank you so much yeah i know appreciate i think i think uh you know of anything we've been so surprised by the amount of support people have expressed for uh for this you know i had people tell me like man i missed that game mode uh i used to have friends who sat next to me on the couch and would scream at like (laughs) random times next to me so they'd freak me out Uh, other people have offered their their voice uh, voices to help out with the short including shapeshifter and true sons of mandalore two of the most popular clone voices out there on the internet also had nice. a lot of people who wanted to help out his acting a lot of children said you know fly me out and i don't want to be an ewok and i'm like okay i don't want to get in trouble with your parents you know yeah. also <laughs> other stuff like that but yeah we're, we're very excited very small 18 plus <laughs> <laughs> no 100 percent. yeah yeah big big challenge right now we've uh we've been working with a couple other star wars creators like uh, uh rexon around uh on instagram and tiktok he's been a huge help gonna be helping us out with some armor and stuff and and, and a friend of his who's Taylor who who is also a, a, a Star Wars cosplayer is be is going to be providing us some of the I think an E11 replica and then also nice. like uh, some armor I think they're providing a scout trooper armor we're building though our stormtrooper armor and man it, it is in, insane I've never built armor from scratch before um, and neither have us as a team so we're just watching tutorials every day and making sure we don't you know mess anything up <laughs> <laughs> but you know you'd be surprised um, I we've we've looked at some reference material from a new hope and from Empire Strikes Back their armor is cracked like everywhere in mm-hmm. every bit you know we've zoomed up on a there's a picture of Carrie Fisher between um, I think three stormtroopers for a promotional shot for Empire Strikes Back and you can just see like the cracks on the armor plating and like on the side on the on the shoulder pad and it's like wow this i never noticed how like messed up in the armor is it's not like really 
it's not professionally made. It, it definitely is like scrappy, you know, whatever. So yeah, these guys were better. building it in their their basement and were like <laughs> unaware that they were creating a whole world of cosplay stuff. Oh, hundred percent. Out of the stuff they found at like thrift stores and Kmart's and like <laughs> the sh- the shoes that they have are those like really strange like white leather shoes that people are prized now. Like it's yeah. crazy to think about. Oh, hundred percent. And I think that speaks volumes about like where Star Wars comes from, right? Like it's just scrappy. It's like it's very you know, um, it, you know, it, it's for everyone. It, it comes from the bottom up, and, and it's it's a great piece that I I really like to think of as like you know the Americas and even the world at this point. But like everyone like feeds into this like fictional universe. It's like a, it's like everyone's project, you know, which mm-hmm. is why Star Wars is so cool and exciting. Um, but yeah, we're we're like, super super excited about this project. Uh, trying to make sure we're we're touching a part of um, the Star Wars universe that it could you know be something that actually happened, but without messing with Lucasfilm's like actual storyline at all. Um, yeah. Because we we don't expect them to touch this, to be honest. So <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. First off, I want to get into that a little bit, but going back to to the beginning, let's talk about your um, your your exploration of the cinematic Star Wars experiences, starting with like the stuff with the Unreal Engine. Uh, what what drew you first to that, and what are some of the challenges that you've been facing and have overcome through this learning experience? Really, wow, you are a master of asking questions. I just want to say that. <laughs> um, but yes, I'd love to talk about that. So um, I think you know just just to start off, I think I've always been interested in. Um, that sort of creation of like short films, animation, I've always mm-hmm. been wanting to do something like that, which is why when Battlefront 2 came out um, and we were able to get a pool of us together in a lobby, I was doing recreations with my friends because I yeah. think I wanted, I've always wanted to do um, live action enactments of what I, we see in the animated show. Because I think for a lot of people, the disconnect Our between like Rebels and like real life or Star Wars Clone Wars in real life is that like us. it's a cartoon, you know, and some people are turned off by it, some people are turned on by it. I, I love cartoons and animations. But um, yeah, just to show that this is actually really happening in the Star Wars universe and it's just cool to, to visualize that. Um, and then when it comes to Unreal Engine, you know, watching some fellow friends load your films and cinematic captures, you know, honestly, They've been a huge inspiration mm-hmm. and help. I mean, Cinematic uh, but, Captures is an absolute legend. I love that oh guy. Oh my god! Oh my god! He is humble and a genius. He told me. He told me how. I asked him, "How did you get your virtual camera rig from your Oculus Rift and and create this camera?" He's like, "Well, I watched that behind the scenes Mandalorian episode, and I couldn't <laughs> fall asleep, so I got up and in four hours, like he like basically figured out how to do it on Unreal, and I was like, wow! And then literally did a whole Skillshare course teaching everyone else how to do it." Yes, um, voice by yours truly. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And that's right. So, you know, Uplink Podcast here did the voice of that entire Skillshare class, which, by the way, was amazing to listen to. I, I watched it twice because I could hear you, your beautiful voice. <laughs> that's appreciated. <man. laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah, so he he and Locher, um first started testing all this stuff out um, with using you know, what the Mandalorian's technology of Unreal Engine, right, for that space, that creator space where you could make things look real life uh, with, like, either, like, ray trace lighting, uh, simulated part- particle effects, um, different characters and animations that you can bring in, um, especially, you know, the helpful models that, that we have from, from DICE and, and from Battlefront, Battlefront mm-hmm. 20, uh, 2017, Battlefront 2, and also uh, Jedi Fallen Order. There's just a lot of assets to work with. Now, obviously, I'm not, you know, saying go rip assets or anything, but um, it, it's helpful, you know, for Star Wars and you know, fans and creators to be able to create some short things with with those projects, as well as a lot of modelers in the community who've created their own Star Wars characters uh, to be able to put that and and make something of it. Which is which is why I was yeah. interested in Unreal Engine because for a long time, right, I was doing um, uh, a weekly mod series where I, I would I would you know cover mods created by the community, um, and I know Azatru is doing that right now and has been for forever um, doing the the Hello, mods. Hello, my five, name is Azatru. How story. are you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and I and I you know I love I love his series. Um, but yeah, so uh, one thing to me was like these models um, are amazing. Some of them are, are so much work goes into them, and you know obviously it's great that it's going into a video game, but also like could we make this part of like an expansive like entertainment you know um universe right can we can we put this into like an animation etc and so that's that's where i started talking to some of them and and we we started working on some projects uh so we've got a couple projects lined up right now but uh, unreal engine has been both um an amazing tool for creative 
um, work, but it also has been an extreme, extreme pain also at the same time. And, and I can talk a little bit about that. Um, one thing is, uh, is capes. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta be honest with you. Capes are so hard to work with. Cloth physics are like, cause, okay, so I'm gonna try to make this like understandable for people who aren't as familiar with the software. Um, there's a thing called cloth painting. Um, and what you do, and this is just generally for you know, the industry in, in general, um, basically you take a mesh, uh, which is like you know the physical object that you see, um, and if it's a, like a cape or something, you're supposed to paint on it like a certain amount of weights so that it's supposed to like flow with any wind mm-hmm. uh, factors you have or flow with any movement. Um, and it's, it's really hard to get that working because the thing is it will clip, i.e. it'll go through like your actual like shoulder or it'll go through like your waist and hip if you don't do it well enough or you don't yeah. have enough wind um and that's that has to do with collisions but uh unreal is really buggy so sometimes it doesn't work <laughs> uh so yeah i don't know if anyone's seen the the victory and death animation we did but um uh basically there was one part where vader's cape was blowing a lot in the wind and we had to do it that way because some reason it was not colliding with the ground at all. So if if we didn't have that much wind turned up, it wouldn't go through. Um, <laughs> yeah, and also like a lot of our shots, we couldn't rework. Um, Cinematic Captures was kind enough to go and do do the lighting and and work for us, um, which was amazing. Um, beautiful work. But uh, after he did the first render out of each frame, or each shot, um, Unreal would break. So like the lighting was messed up. Uh, mm. it, you should have seen uh, the the snow scene. It, it was like really really bright, almost like. Have you played Nuketown Battle uh, in Call of Duty or, or or even like End of Rogue One? Right. You yeah. know how like, boom, it's just at bright white everywhere. Yeah, that's that's exactly exactly what the <laughs> shot looked like. Uh, untouchable, unworkable. So I'm always scared that Unreal is gonna break on me as I'm working with it. But <laughs> yeah, I, f- yeah, I find it so fascinating the the strength of that that software when you're when you're thinking about it. Like I remember first seeing um, and hearing about cinematic captures jumping in and Mm -hmm. testing that out just with the proof of concept stuff that he's working on and just playing around a little more with like implementing the oculus rift and you look at it you're like oh that makes a ton of sense and you see something like the use case with uh the mandalorian and you see these implementations using this this engine that was originally developed for video games and you see it taking this next step and mm-hmm. I love to see that. Like, it's so interesting to me to see the the next step for this stuff. And I hope, hopefully, uh, like you're talking about, it, it's almost fighting what it was originally planned to do. But um, <laughs> hopefully in the future, we start to see that being more integrated into it. As stuff like huge, big budget stuff with The Mandalorian, you know that they're, they're working on something that was specifically built for them. And hopefully right. we as like consumers and hobbyists get to see that. Oh, 100%. And honestly, I, it's really grateful to see right everything you talked about, how it's being used in film, etc., um, and it's great because one, it's it's an open source software um, mm-hmm. that anyone can use. So if you want to pick it up, I think it's really intimidating at first. But in all honesty, I, I'm pretty sure like most people could pick this up. And this isn't discredit anyone who's really well versed in Unreal, but um, it is something that you definitely could learn because there's a lot of tutorials online. Um, and secondly, it is uh, it it's video game software that I think a lot of people will overlook, especially like maybe some of the older generation that sees like, oh, it's gaming, it's video games, you know, it's it's not you know any practical use when it comes to like you know real world ap- applications but a um, lot of right studios recognize the value of the, of the video game technology and and I, and I have a friend of mine who has been doing virtual um, previs right for for some film studios in a similar place like the volume where all the LED screens are creating this like um, space and with COVID um, he has a friend at Stanford who uh, basically created a plugin in Unreal where every time you put an actor in it will automatically not allow them to come any closer than six feet um it's really really cool uh okay. and that's super useful for hollywood and you know anyone who's creating any film projects but yeah a lot of people are using it for previs um especially us we're, we're going to be prevising out uh ewok hunt actually today uh so it'll be, nice. be a good time <laughs> so that leads perfectly jumping back into ewok hunt you have this experience with the, the f- using battlefront uh doing those recreations, moving to Unreal Engine, uh, getting that experience and using it as a, a pre-visualization tool and going in 
So you have this experience in the digital, um, and now you're like, okay, let's jump into the real world. Let's go to the original filming site for Indoor. Uh, <laughs> what what were you guys thinking about? Uh, was there ever a time where you're like, okay, we want to do this. Let's do it in Unreal Engine. Uh, and then mm-hmm. you're like, let's do it in real person. Or was it just like, we're going to do this real life Ewok hunt and then utilize Unreal Engine as like a, a storyboard almost? Yeah. So um, I'm actually good friends with uh, with with the director, uh, one of the directors. And he and I were sitting on the couch. I think it was like over a year ago. Um, and we were playing Battlefront. And I remember we were just talking about like, man, it would be so cool to, to do Battlefront live action. Um, I remember talking about like going to Porto to film where Naboo was filmed and like, you know, carry a DC 15 rifle, but maybe I might get in trouble with the local authorities. Um, <laughs> Sir, what is also this? Did... <laughs> what is this weapon? Um, yeah, so that was also on the mind, but also about like Ewok hunts. And I remember we were just talking through it and both of us were like, wow, that's totally doable. We live in California. Um, we know so many people who are in the film industry slash like, um, you know, just raw talent of all, all words. And we were like, this would be really cool to, to do. So literally that same week, um, I like completely like disregarded the project. He went and found, you know, co-producers, costume, makeup, you know, he like went to go talk to everyone and basically assembled a team. And so we've been in previs for over a year now, um, which is exciting. And they, Everyone was really hyped about it, you know, just the fact that we're going to... And one, Ewoks are, I think, both cute, and it's exciting to turn that, that cute vulnerability into, like, a terror object, mm-hmm. right? Which I think Ewok Hunt, the game mode, did very well. Oh, definitely. Um, and even even Return of the Jedi. Um, and then we were always planning on shooting in, uh, in the Redwoods, I think. Um, we've changed our location a few times. I think, uh, I think George actually shot, uh, not at Yosemite, but further left up in... Uh, Closer, like the redwood redwood forest in yeah. North California, but I think I think we're going a little bit a uh, little bit closer. Uh, but it's still it's still redwood forest, so I mean it's <laughs> it still works for what it needs to. Um, and I think with Unreal, it wasn't something I was well versed in uh, until maybe I, I still wouldn't even say I'm well versed in it. But uh, it wasn't something I was familiar with until quite recently. So now we're, we're trying to make use of it in the sense of. Yeah, pre-visualization, but also um, post will be a, a, quite a long process. We we have, uh, I think, between May and hopefully before the end of the summer is, is all of our post-production VFX. Uh, we've got a lot of really good talent working on it, people who've done music videos, uh, a lot of cool VFX for other projects. Um, but we want to be doing uh, maybe some... Uh, Ewok related, particle related uh, stuff in Unreal that maybe we can transfer over. Uh, if not, we'll also be using other other software as well. Um, but yeah, you know, just trying to combine all our knowledge and expertise and make this look as great as we can, uh, so that everyone can enjoy it. Definitely. Was there? Um, y- you guys are perfectly placed for California. The Redwoods is amazing. We went there. My family and I went there. <laughs> Uh, quite a few years ago, but it was gorgeous, and it does. No f- way! It, it captures that Star Wars feel. Um, yeah, yeah. How was that? How was that trip? <laughs> if was, I could ask a little bit about that. Yeah, it was great. Um, so, backstory for those on the podcast. I don't know if I've actually talked about this on the podcast, but 2008, uh, my family sold a bunch of what they owned, uh, bought a motorhome, and our family of six went across the whole of the West Coast in a 16-foot motorhome. And one of our stops was the Redwood National Forest National Park, and wow. it was it felt it it feels like Star Wars. Like it's amazing just walking <laughs> into that location. You're like, okay, yeah, back in the day, the '80s, like, you can just see it. The, the Star Wars crew, the films, all of the actors in that location. So it's super cool to see uh, you guys take that that perfect perfect location that you guys are in um, <laughs> especially during covid where travel outside of the the u.s is limited mm-hmm. um and see seeing what you have available to you and being like okay yeah it's time <laughs> well i just want to say that by the way your family trip sounds super hearty that is amazing that you guys were able to you know like explore so much of, of the west coast and the united states that that's amazing um uh, but yeah, exactly. Like you said, and I, I've actually not been there in a long time, but uh, the Redwood 
Alps are definitely uh, like a beautiful place to be. And I think honestly, you know, besides filming Ewok Hunt, I'm sure they'll be excited to be out there. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to see the beautiful outdoors. Um, but yeah, no, we're we're trying to make sure we're we're filming. Everything's COVID safe, so everyone's getting tested. I think some of the crew members are fully vaccinated at this point, um, and then. Uh, obviously taking precautions with uh you know wearing ppe etc so mm-hmm. things, will, things will hopefully be, be good we're trying to limit how many people are going up um so i'm actually not even going up myself uh because i don't need to be there but i'll be you know keeping things locked down on my end <laughs> nice so what's what's the process like putting together a star wars short film you're going you're building the team uh mm-hmm. what are the what are the steps that you took to get to this point yeah, so um, a lot of it, like I said, we've been in previs for like over a year. A lot of it is finding the right people um, and then also figuring out like what we want to do with this. The script, I think, has had over like 50 versions uh, at this point. Uh, it's been it's been through a lot. But, you know, especially with something as like important as Star Wars, you, you don't want to, you know, mess with it. You want to make sure you've, you're lore accurate. You want to make sure that everything is, you know, right. And then also you want to like bring in like, the fun, like creative, like aspect, so that you can make something entertaining and something enjoyable for everyone as well. Um, uh, so, when it comes to that, I think a lot of it has to do with um, finding people who you know are are passionate about um, Star Wars, are passionate about story writing and creating. And so, a lot of people who are on this project are are huge fans. One of our, uh, the other script writer, one of them, uh, Justice, was invited on to, like, Star Wars is official. Like, they interview, like, fans sometimes, um, and they'll put that on their YouTube channel, um, which was exciting. And then we're also working with uh, uh, Aubrey. Uh, she's a... Uh, She's the she's uh, dating Corey, who's on the Kessel Runs Transmissions podcast, and who's working around with the Rexing Around crew. And then she also gets a lot of like early um, versions of like the books, like for the High Republic, okay. or to review, or other or gets other things. So she's really in tune with like that uh, publishing district of like Lucasfilm, etc. So um, yeah, uh, when it comes to that, we, you know, we always just want to make sure we're referencing the right stuff, and then also like finding things that are like both. Um, like accessible and like not. So I think the the tough part when it comes to live action is getting physical props, getting mm-hmm. the the suit of armor, getting we can't get an ATSD. Like that is not reasonable, so we're not going to write that <laughs> in, right? Um, unless like we trust our VFX so much that it could, like look good, you know. Yeah. But yeah. Um but we know that we can, you know, access armor, we can access weapons, we can access certain things. Um we were very surprised to find the Ewok head that we picked up. Um that was made by a beautiful artist, um, I think based in uh somewhere close to, to Colorado actually. I d I don't remember oh. where. Um yeah, but uh yeah, she sent it to us, it was beautiful, um and now we have our um makeup artist who's gonna be blooding it up uh, and making it look scary. This is uh, so, so beautiful. <laughs> now yeah, we're going to make it horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, I was a little sad about that, but also, you know, for the good of the, good of the film, you know. Exactly. And then um, we're also going to be wrecking some, some armor things. So we have to actually have to get extra armor because there's some stuff that we're going to be destroying um, purposefully. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's exciting when it comes to that, but also like it's like okay how do we budget this out okay how much is that going to cost all right so this is this is why we've been doing a lot of like crowdfunding um etc and and just to reiterate this film is not going to be making any revenue at all unless disney wants to monetize the film but mm-hmm. um yeah so everything is just purely to to fund our our costs so uh yeah that's that's probably been the biggest uh biggest uh, both excitement and hurdle um and then as well as you know making sure we can get everyone up to to yosemite in time i'm pretty sure uh, we were originally going to have Rexing around and his crew come shoot behind the scenes in Yosemite, but uh, he impulse bought a house, so he's now moving in <laughs> April, uh, which is going to be fun and exciting for him. But yeah, he's very busy. Um, he's working. Uh, it's public now, so I can talk about it. But he's working on like a project with like Snoop Dogg and uh, Jesse from YouTube, and then he also like lent his um, what's that gun that the Rebels use? It's like A280. Oh, the A280C. Yeah, he, he gave his A280C to someone who, like, let Ice Cube use it in a music video or something. I just, like, okay, this is, like, too much for me. I'm, like, not touching any of that crazy, you know, music sphere, Hollywood sphere. But, yeah, it's exciting to see. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm super, super excited to see what you guys do and start to see uh, what you guys are putting together there. Like, it's super exciting. 
yeah no thank you so much i hope i hope you enjoy it i i really do and i hope everyone enjoys it for when it comes out it'll it'll probably be around um six to eight minutes long so it'll be longer than um shadow of the public which was cine short film longer than victory and death which is uh which is one we just released um and it'll be it'll be definitely i think scary enough that there should be advisory caution for anyone who's younger than five um but i don't think it'll you know you don't need to worry if you're not like a hereditary fan or <laughs> exciting so yeah before we go i'm bringing something new to the podcast i want to i want to start bringing in some some interactivity and some games to the show so i'm gonna oh, i'm scared i'm gonna list off ewok names and I want to give you. I want you to give me a yub nub rating, out of ten. <laughs> ten yub nubs is the coolest Ewok ever. One yub nub is the worst Ewok. Okay, okay. I'm gonna be taking notes. You know, in case we need to name any of our Ewoks, this this might be actually kind of helpful. <laughs> okay. So let's get started with the most recognizable. Wicked. How many yub nubs do you give Wicked? That wi- okay. I know this is bad to start off with this, but a ten out of ten yub nubs for Wicked. He's, <laughs> he's the most Ewok. I mean, ever. How could you not give him? <laughs> oh, this is fun. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> okay. Now, going into a little more obscure here. This is Legends from uh, the TV show. Wicked's mother, Shodu. What are you thinking? Mm. Ooh, Shodu. That's a new one I've not heard. But if it's Wicked's mother, Shodu. Hmm. Sounds pretty cute. I give that a seven yub nub. Okay. I think. And then uh, one 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 more in the Wicked family, uh, Weechi is uh, Wicked's Weechi. eldest brother. Oh no, you can't do that to me. <laughs> Weechi sounds more more Ewok than Wicked. Yes. I'm sorry that. Oh, can I can I break it? Can I can I? To- so Wicked is now nine out of ten yub nub. Okay. Uh, so 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 chew so boo yeah, was, show do <laughs> show do all right man i suck uh that's a six out of ten uh and yub nub and then uh weechi right that, that was the last one weechi is definitely 10 out of 10 yub nub that that goes king king of the hill <laughs> perfect um next let's talk about uh this is this is all from starwars.com uh, no way. <laughs> introduced in the cartoon is Wicket's best friend and romantic interest, Princess Kinesa Ajari oh. Kentaka. <laughs> okay, I actually know this character because Aubrey's a huge fan of, of her. Um, Princess, uh, I'm not even going to try that. Uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely 8 out of 10. I think that's an that's 8 out of 10. Wicked. Okay. Now, Wicket's great grandfather. Oh my god, are, are you kidding me? <laughs> this, 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 this is all on StarWars.com. Uh, I can put the link to this in the description. This? Uh, okay, okay. I, I, w- I thought I was done with Wicket's family until I heard this. Ephraim Warwick. That is his name. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a famous historical figure. So I'm, exactly. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give. I'm gonna give this a two out of ten. Yub nub. I I don't I don't feel a lot of Ewok. I feel more, you know, in a suit, uh, writing up some law, uh, <laughs> if some accord, uh, history book type vibe is what I'm getting. So. Okay. <laughs> That's funny though. I, I I did not know there were this many named Ewoks in the Star Wars universe. There's like there's this. a pretty hefty amount here. Uh, now let's go on a speed round here. Okay. All right. Quickly. As quick as you can, uh, just by name, Tebow. Oh, uh, 8 out of 10. Nippet. Ooh. 9 out of 10. Wuda. Ooh, uh, 6 out of 10. Uh, let's see, Leektar. <laughs> uh, 7.5, 8 out of 10. Flitchy. Oh, man, I love these. Uh, that's 9 out of 10. Uh, Chubray. <laughs> That's ten out of ten for sure. And <laughs> Chub Ray. finally, Stimzy. Stimzy, ooh, ooh, four out of ten. And those last sounds like it sounds like a, it's like like a weapon in Star Wars. <laughs> yes, the last three were uh, named by Hasbro, who made their action figures. Uh, no way. Yes. So they aren't even they're not even like in can like in like any like story. For Star Wars. Yeah, uh, it says wow. here before Hasbro released Chubray and Stimzy, two Ewoks that operate one of the catapults. It was believed that uh, no op- 
Apak uh, was one of them. Additional research identifies another Ewok. So it was originally. Wow. Apparently, there's a whole lore around the uh, Hasbro uh, Ewoks here in terms of their relation to each other and uh, who they were. So you got to watch wow. out for that. That's amazing. And That's amazing. finally, I'm, I'm, I keep on scrolling down and seeing great names. Um, I, the last one here, um, a final group of names were given in the Rogues Gallery article in Star Wars Insider 135 by Leland Chi. And uh, the one that I want to point out here is Greeman. Greeman? That's an Ewok. Yes, and has a greenish headgear and can be seen in the village square piling up logs <laughs> under Han Solo. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Um, wow, Greenman. I doesn't sound very Ewoky. I would, I would also go four out of ten. Okay. Five. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing, though. I, I did not. Wow, you've educated me, <laughs> rem- amazingly. <laughs> and there we go. This week's episode of Name That Ewok. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you're the host. I, you're you're so good at this. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on. Name that Ewok. I really appreciate it. That was so much fun. Uh, I want to, you know, shout out my mom here. <laughs> uh, growing up, uh, you, you as a young boy looked up to, to the, the amazing world of Ewoks. Am I right? <laughs> I, oh, 100% I did. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much uh, for inviting me on also. I just want to say this is a great podcast uh, to talk about Ewok Hunt and everything. Uh, so, yeah, thank you again. I, I'm always excited to come back on. Heck yes. I was As soon as I saw that announcement, I was like, oh boy, yes, I want to talk to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll definitely let you know when that drops. I'd uh, love to do a live, uh, you know, watch party with, with yes. you as well. We could yeah. do a, a commentary for it, too. I would love to do that. That would be amazing. <laughs> totally down for that. Dude, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's always a blast having you on thank the show. Thank you so much for has- having me. I'm always excited to come back on. You know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's all for this episode of Uplink Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can support the show on Patreon, patreon.com slash Podcast. To get exclusive content as well as access to Uplink Plus, a monthly exclusive podcast talking all things wider world of gaming, Star Wars, and more. Definitely come check this out and help us support the show. A great free way to support the show is by leaving us a review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Anywhere you can leave a review of the podcast, it helps us out a ton and helps new listeners find the show. You can follow us on Twitter at Uplink Podcast as well as on Instagram, Uplink Podcast as well. Twitter is a great way to keep up to date on all things Star Wars gaming, as well as all things on the show. Also, definitely check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash the Star Wars Battlefront podcast. We stream every Saturday. At, usually it's around 12 p.m. MST. We play Star Wars games, we play Among Us, we play all kinds of fun stuff, and it is a great time. Also, stay tuned for some more content coming to our YouTube channel as we are ramping things up. For 2021. Also, if you love video games, Star Wars, plants, and pizza, definitely check us out on Discord. Link will be in the description. Come join our awesome community. You can listen to the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you find podcasts, you can find the show. As always, thanks for listening, and may the Force be with you.